Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Jojo Coco Studio. I'm Joe, and if you're looking for a mini ITX motherboard for your ultra compact PC build, you may have run across this particular model, the H170N Wi-Fi by Gigabyte. Your plan is not to overclock your CPU and you want all the necessary features and some future-proof stuff like M.2 slot and the USB Type-C. This could be an interesting option for you. Today I'll give you a quick tour around the product and let you know my thoughts about it after three months usage. But first, let's highlight the specification and what you will get from this motherboard. So of course the form factor is Mini ITX with H170 chipset. Very suitable for those who are not planning to overclock their CPU. Supports the latest Intel 6th generation Skylake CPU. Has Wi-Fi on board so no need to buy the extra hardware to connect to a Wi-Fi. Bluetooth connection, good for wireless devices. Future-proof features, for example, you may want to upgrade your SSDs to M.2 SSDs for the extra speedy data transfer. And also the USB Type-C, which will happen in the future. Max capacity of 32 gigabytes of RAM, but keep in mind you have only two slots and they're dual channels as well. Plenty of USB ports. PCI Express 16 slot, or if you're not going to play games, then you can use the onboard graphics, which supports 4K display. Lastly, decent sound, which this motherboard supports optical SPDIF and five audio jacks, which I will show you in a minute. So let's take a quick look at the box itself. Okay, pretty much the same on all four sides, but over here, there's a brief specifications in many different languages. So feel free to read in your comfortable language. Okay. All right. And at the bottom of the box, we'll see more features and more specifications, but in greater detail and more of a marketing style. Uh, we'll quickly go through everything. So LGA 1151 supports sixth generation Intel Core the newest Wi-Fi connection, which is the 802.11 AC, 5 gigahertz, up to 867 megabits per second. Comes with the external antenna, which I'll show you in a minute. And yeah, the board itself, decent audio quality from the motherboard, USB Type-C connector, some more features, M.2, SATA ports, and some really nice looking capacitors. And to be honest, I don't really actually know what they do. And last but not least, the specification itself. Okay, and the diagram of the IO ports. And yeah, that's about it. Oh, and also 4K support if you're planning to use the onboard graphics, which is excellent. All right, let's take a look at the product itself. So before we dive into the product, let's see what it comes with. It comes with a manual, very, very important and, and very useful while you're installing the PC itself. Some multilingual installation guide, two CDs, which I didn't use, and two SATA cables. Uh, one of them is a straight version and the other is a right angle. As you can see, this is the right angled version. Another important device that comes with the motherboard is the external Wi-Fi antenna. This is excellent because you can put the Wi-Fi receiver without having to move your computer close to your network. Also, the base is magnetic, therefore you can simply put it anywhere that is metal. Last but not least, it comes with the standard low profile IO shield. Okay, so let's look at the actual product itself, the motherboard. We'll cover the IO ports first and I'll do overview on the motherboard mentioning the important things that we should know. Starting from the left, there are two USB 3.0 ports, traditional PS2 mouse or keyboard port, DVI-D port, this only supports maximum resolution of 1920 by 1200 at 60 Hertz. SMA antenna connectors to connect to an external antenna, which we saw earlier. Two HDMI ports, which supports maximum resolution of 4096 by 2160 at 24 Hertz. In other words, 4K. One USB Type-C port, 
two RJ45 LAN port, which supports data transfer rate up to one gigabits per second. Another two USB 3.0 ports, optical SPDIF out connector. This connector provides digital audio out to an external audio system that supports digital optical studio. And last but not least, we got the five audio jacks, which the orange is center or subwoofer. Black is the rear speaker out. Blue is line in jack. Green is line out jack, mainly for headphones or speakers. And the pink is the microphone jack. On the opposite side, we can see the SATA ports, which we could either use as SATA Express, or you can just use the SATA 3, which has a transfer rate of six gigabits per second. Moving on to the bird's eye view, we'll scan the important internal connectors on the motherboard. Here we have two more SATA 3 connectors, the Intel H170 chipset, which manages the flow of data between CPU, memory, and peripherals, the PCI Express 16, which is for your graphics card. Just so you know, I'm using a 1060 GeForce card, so it works just fine. Front panel audio header. This connector is for connecting to your PC case audio line in, line out, and microphone. USB 3.0 header. This connector connects to your PC case, uh, the USB ports. Moving towards the top part, we have the ATX 12 volt 4 pin power connector, which mainly supplies power to the CPU. If this is not connected, the computer will not start. CPU fan header and case fan header. This connector controls the speed of the CPU fan or the case fans. The ATX 24 pin power connector, which mainly supplies power to the entire motherboard. Front panel header, this connector is for the power switch, reset switch, hard drive status indicator, and power LED light. And last but not least, the CPU socket, the LGA1151, and the DDR4 2133 MHz memory slots, which supports up to 32 gigabytes. Looking at the back of the motherboard, there's not much going on, but we can certainly see the M.2 slot. So overall, my thoughts about this motherboard is mainly positive. Just keep in mind that I am not planning to overclock my motherboard. If that's the case, maybe you can check out the Z170 and Wi-Fi. However, there are some drawbacks to this motherboard. I wish the SATA 3 ports on the right hand side is facing upwards, not to the side. This is because it is inaccessible due to the lack of space in my PC case. But I guess it depends on the design of your PC case. Another drawback for this motherboard is it provides only one case fan header. But my solution to this was I got a fan splitter. I guess it was not much a very big deal. Lastly, this might not be a drawback, but I would like to highly suggest that go with the most RAM that you can afford because by nature, Mini ITX motherboards has only two slots of RAM. Also, same as your graphics card, you cannot crossfire or SLI because we have only one PCI slot. I assume some of you may be interested in installing an aftermarket CPU cooler on this motherboard. I will put a link in the description below if you're interested. So we've come to an end of this video and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please press the like and subscribe button. If not, you know what to do. If you have any questions, just uh, post it down in the comments below and uh, hope to see you in my other videos. Thanks and bye.